All right, guys, so I stumbled across this amazing clip uh, from a youth pastor out of the Raleigh-Durham area in North Carolina by the name of Mr. John K. Amenchiku. And he is going to confront the Wake County School Board on their diversity and inclusion initiatives and the amount of money that they're spending on that while the children in this school district are failing. And again, I just had to share this clip because it is nothing but facts. And I think he does an amazing job of highlighting how our priorities are out of line when it comes to what we're teaching kids in school and what we're spending money on, where we're pouring our resources, especially considering how, again, our kids are not doing well in regards to their proficiency in reading, writing, and math. So without further ado, I, I want to go ahead and roll the clip. The last name is Amon Chukwu. Thank you very much for correcting me, Mr. Amon Chukwu. Yes, no problem. It means I know God. Um, Luke chapter 17 and 2 says that it's better for a person to have a millstone tied around their neck and to be thrown into the sea than for anyone to harm or damage a child. And so the question today to the school board is only you know whether or not your role, the policies, the curriculum, and the things that you allow in this school system in Wake County, only you know whether or not a millstone is tied around your neck. The reality is this. God is going to judge every last one of you for decisions that are made on behalf of children. You know, this past year we spent $1 million on a diversity office. And how did that benefit black children? How did it benefit children in general? Well, 78% of third through eighth grade black students are not proficient in math in Wake County. We're wasting taxpayer dollars putting money towards this diversity office that's not benefiting those who need it the most. 66% of third through eighth grade students are not proficient in reading. Black students, they're not reading on grade level. They're not performing mathematically, and they're not going to be able to get jobs in the fields like STEM. But we're wasting money on a diversity, equity, and inclusion office while we are failing black students in the name of diversity. You know, in the Jim Crow era, black students were locked out of the public school system. But today they are trapped in. And many of these students need options. They need school choice. They need the opportunity to take their taxpayer dollars and take it to school systems that will benefit them and support them and educate them. And as we talk about inclusion and making sure that the trans student feels comfortable and the queer student feels comfortable, what does that have to do with reading, writing, and arithmetic? As we are, in, oh, as we, as we are teaching cultural Marxism and grooming children to be the next pervert, we are damaging our kids in this public school system, and it needs to stop. Yeah. So did anybody hear any lies there, right? I did not hear anything but facts. I did not hear anything that a reasonable person could disagree with, right? I, I don't think that any reasonable person could disagree with anything that guy just said, right? Um, because he's right. And, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of the video I did yesterday about the NHL and their uh, woke diversity initiative where, you know, they, they say that the NHL, the National Hockey League, is too white, and they hired a black woman, right, to come in and tell them that, hey, you're racist. It's too white and you need more so-called people of color. And that kind of relates to this clip in the sense that, uh, you know, this pastor is talking about who benefits from this. He said the children do not benefit from this. But the people who do benefit from this are woke white liberals, right, who have a massive amount of white guilt, right, 
who feel good about this type of stuff and so-called women of color, mainly uh, woke liberal black women who they hire and put in these positions to make them feel like they have some power, right? Those are the main two groups of people that do benefit from this stuff, okay? At the top of every so-called diversity and inclusion initiative program office, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be woke white liberals and mainly liberal woke black women, right? They are the people that are benefiting from this. But again, the main point that this pastor was pushing here, which is something that I've been yelling and screaming about for the longest time, is that we simply do not have the resources or time to push wokeness in school. We don't. Our kids are failing. Right, they can't read, write, do math. This is not just something that's happened in North Carolina, it's happened all across the country. We're failing them. But yet we want to spend time in class teaching them about things that have nothing to do with helping them get a job. Okay. Again, the woke revolutionaries are the same people that want to whine and complain about inequality, the wealth gap, right? How how you know black people don't have as much wealth as whites. And I'm sitting thinking, I'm like. Well, what is the easiest way or what helps people build wealth? Well, what helps people build wealth is acquiring skills, right? Acquiring knowledge that is going to translate into getting a good job or being able to start a business. Really, shouldn't you be focused on teaching all children these skills, equipping them with the skills to be able to provide for themselves and to get good paying jobs, right? If that's if you really want to solve the inequality problem, if you really want to close the wealth gap, if you want to do the things that you claim you want to do for black people and so-called marginalized individuals, if you really want to help them, why are you not trying to educate them with real skills? Why are you trying to dumb down the education system? Why are you trying to dumb down the education system? You're trying to make it so uh, they can't get zeros, right? You can't fail. If you turn in homework late, that's okay. We're not going to penalize you. If you act up in class, we're not going to penalize you. If you're late to class, we're not going to penalize you. It seems like these schools are simply not trying to prepare kids for real life. Okay, on any level, whether it comes to actually being educated enough to get a real job or, you know, punishing them or trying to incentivize behaviors that they're going to need in order to be successful in the real world. They're not trying to do that at all. They're not trying to make these kids productive citizens of society. And it, that is on purpose. Because ultimately, a lot of these schools are being run by these teachers unions, which fund the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party is woke. The teachers unions are woke. They are super progressive. And what they're concerned about more than anything is not the education of these kids. It is maintaining and keeping power. This is why they want to keep kids dumb. They want to keep them dumb and woke. They want them to be LGBTQ, BLM, woke activists that always will vote Democrat Party, right? Always vote Democrat Party. How many times have I come on this uh, channel and say, hey, <laughs> you know, uh, Democrats really think their voters are dumb, right? They really do, okay? They lie. They distort reality. They, you know, mislead people. They do it because they think you are dumb. They want you to be dumb. They want these kids to be stupid. They want them to only be concerned about wokeness, social justice, diversity and inclusion, things that have nothing to do with nothing, right? Have nothing to do with actually being productive citizens in society. Democrats don't want them productive. They want them dependent, right? A productive citizen with an independence mindset <laughs> that understands that, hey, I don't want to pay a bunch of taxes. Okay, to go towards these inefficient government programs, I can take care of myself. Uh, that's not a good Democrat Party voter, right? But somebody that's dependent on the system, that's looking up to the Democrat Party, aka the government, to give everything to them, to take care of them, right? That's a great Democrat Party voter. And that's what they're trying to make out of these kids. That's why they don't actually want them to learn any real skills. They don't want them to get good jobs. They don't want them to be educated. They don't want to know anything except Republicans racist, right? Democrat party good. That's all they wanted to know. But like this pastor said, the, the answer to this is school choice. Is to have the money go towards schools that are actually teaching kids skills, that are uh, helping kids perform, right? That are actually performing, okay? Give students the option 
to get out of these failing schools, to go to another school that's not going to be focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's going to be focused on math, reading, and writing, right? That's the real solution. So again, kudos to this pastor. Uh, I thought that was uh, an amazing uh, kind of speech that he gave uh, to the school board. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.